Good evening, everyone, and welcome to MYAF Week. And uh, I would like to take this time to thank Pastor and the President for giving me this opportunity to share the Word of God. And before we start, let us look to God in prayer. Dear Lord, our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time that you've given us. We pray, O Lord, that you will teach us through your Word and that you will lead us, O Lord, to live a life worthy of your calling, O Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <clears throat> Today, the title of my sermon is based on this uh phrase, raise the hallelujah. I chose this phrase because I realized how important it is for us to praise God at all times, not only when times are good, but also when times are not good. But that is the challenge for each one of us, isn't it? That when times are not good, it's not very easy to praise God. But today I would like to challenge each one of us to try and lead a life that praises God, not only during the good times, but also the bad times. So before I start, I would like to highlight some of the challenges many young adults face. We may face challenges in the sense of finances, health, family, stress, and career. But I would like to encourage each one of you that through all this, God will see us through because he's able. The scripture portion for today is from Psalm 42, verses 11. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. So I would like to simplify my sermon today using the acronyms from the word praise. So let's start with the word pray. I would like to elaborate on these acronyms using the life and the teaching of one very prominent young adult in the Bible and also possibly the most prominent that has ever walked the face of the earth, Jesus Christ. As we read in the Bible, Jesus' ministry took a flight between the age of 30 to 33. And thus I feel that it's very apt to use that and his teachings in my sermon today. The first thing that we need to do to lead a life that brings praise to God is to pray. In the Gospels, we see Jesus talking a lot about prayer. He taught the disciples how to pray, and that is the Lord's Prayer. And even in some uh, portions of the scripture, he tells the disciples to watch and pray so that they will not fall into temptation. Based on this verse here, to watch and pray means that to be alert. And as Christians, we should always be alert, not only physically, but also spiritually. We must be alert for things that can bring us down or things that are meant to destroy our spirituality. And in order to do that, we have to pray. Prayer is basically the key, not only key for communication between us and God, but also the key that will lead us and strengthen us to escape all the challenges and temptations we face in life. The next letter is R. As a Christian, this letter, this word is not new to us. Every year during Easter and Good Friday, we learn about the value of repentance and we learn about how Jesus died for our sins. Thus, it's very important for each one of us to repent of our sins. And when Jesus taught the disciples the Lord's Prayer, he also taught them to seek for forgiveness and to forgive others. And that shows how important repentance and forgiveness is as a Christian. Today, I would like to encourage you, if you think that there is a sin in your life that you're unable to escape from, bring it to God and repent. When Jesus preached uh, in Matthew 4, verses 12 to 17, this is where Jesus began to preach. He said, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. So if we want to go to heaven, we have to repent of our sins. Next, as a Christian, it's very important to act in faith. But I can tell you that this is not easy. It's not easy to act in faith all the time, especially when we have a lot of other things going on around us. And as humans, we some of us are tuned to believe in facts. And sometimes facts can be very, very misleading and deviating from the faith. However, as Christians, we are encouraged to have faith in God. And I like this phrase that says, 
faith as small as a mustard seed. In Matthew 17 verses 14 to 20, we, we hear the story, we read the story of the demon-possessed boy and the father comes pleading to Jesus to heal his son. And he even goes on to mention that I took my son to your disciples, but they were not able to do anything. And later, when the disciples go up to Jesus and ask him, why weren't they able to do what he did for the boy? Jesus just plainly tells them that they had little faith. And today, in our lives, there are many uh, mountains that we want to move. There are many prayers that we want to be answered. However, we need to uh, re-evaluate. Is our faith as big as our ex expectation? And uh, prayer is not all about just placing everything in God's hands and walking away. But prayer is also about placing everything in God's hands and waiting for it to happen, believing that in accordance to his will, he will grant our desires. The next is invest. This is a very interesting word. And don't worry, I'm not asking you to invest in a share market, but I'm asking you to invest in God's ministry. Uh, <clears throat> This is very important in the sense that we should understand there are many ways to invest in God's ministry or in the kingdom of God. Definitely, uh, the first way is through our tithes, but there are also many other ways to invest in God's ministry. And it doesn't always have to do with money. We can invest our time. We can invest our uh, our facilities, we can share with people, we can support a ministry, we can lend a, a, a year to listen to people's problems. And I would like to draw to the scripture portion in Matthew 25 verses 14 to 28 where the master gave his servants the talents. Now, in the Bible during those times, talents is a unit of measurement used to weigh out silver or gold. So the master gave one servant five talents, another two talents, and yet another one talent. The servants who got the five talents and two talents respectively went and doubled their talents, whereas the servant who received one talent buried it and kept it safely. Now, when the master came back, the master was very pleased with the servants who doubled their talents. But he was, in fact, very, very angry with the servant who did not do anything with the talent given. And he, in fact, called that servant a lazy and wicked servant and asked for the servant to be thrown out. Now, as Christians, as the children of God, this draws very closely upon our lives where God has equipped many of us with many gifts, with many abilities, with many riches. Now, we have to ask ourselves and we have to ask God, what is it that he wants us to do? And are we using our talents uh, rightly for God? So you can only find that answer through praying and having a relationship with God, I believe that when we ask God, what do we do with the talents and abilities that he has given us, he will definitely show us. And I'm sure each one of us would love to hear these words come out of the mouth of God. Well done, good and faithful servant. I'm sure all of us would want to hear that. The next, to lead a life that brings praise to God is we must be willing to serve. We read in John chapter 13, verses 14 to 15, Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. This uh, event of Jesus washing the disciples' feet shows us the act of humility. Jesus was God. He was the Son of God. He was Son of the Most High God. But yet, he came down to earth and led a life of humility. Jesus, through, through his miracles, shows us that he spent his time uh, with people who went unnoticed. He, went, he, he healed the lame. He fed the thousands. He healed the blind. This shows us that Jesus noticed people that were unnoticed. And his life on earth highlighted what a humble servant he was. And Jesus calls us to imitate, to imitate him and to have 
the heart of a servant when doing God's ministry or generally when living as a Christian, we must have this heart to serve because if we are not able to humble ourselves and bring ourselves to the level of serving, we will not be able to do the task God has called us to do. Last but not least, E, emulate. The Bible calls us to be imitators of Christ. And how do we become imitators of Christ is by keeping his commands. And if we do everything mentioned here so far, if we pray daily at all times, as the Bible calls us to, if we repent of our sins and draw close to God, if we have a faith as small as a mustard seed, and if we invest our lives, our times, our talent in God's ministry, and if we uh, make sure that we have humility to serve, and if we are prepared to emulate and become an imitator of Christ, our life will be a life worthy of praise to God. And I would like to end by encouraging each one of you, including myself, let us all aspire to live a life that brings praise to God. Definitely, it's not easy, but God will lead us through. Thank you all for listening. Let us look to God in prayer. Dear Lord, our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Lord, for the challenge, the invitation that you give us to become imitators of Christ. Lord, we pray that you will help us and you will lead us, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.